okay very good morning to all of you and uh, we are uh, we have started the topic uh, system of linear equations which is represented by in a matrix form ax equals to b and we have made a basic assumption that the coefficient matrix a is non singular so this coefficient matrix a is assumed to be non singular unless specified okay and we have also uh, seen uh, what type of direct methods available and what type of iterative methods available for solving such uh, system okay so so far we have not gone through all the methods so we have all, we have seen that why we will uh, discard the method inversion method cramer's rule because of the involvement of evaluation of determinant so before going further here i would like to give you a an application in uh, uh, electrical engineering okay so where you have the following so we wish to determine here the currents i1 we wish to determine so in this case uh, here we wish to determine currents i1 i2 and i3 okay in the following in the following circuit okay electrical circuit so here we are going to uh, uh, we, we are going to see in um, uh, very soon that that actually uh, leads to it uh, leads to system of linear equations in i1 i2 and i3 they are unknown they need to be determined so what we are going to use here we are going to use uh, kirchhoff's law we are going to use kirchhoff's law and ohm's law we are going to use kirchhoff's law and ohm's law to construct system of linear equations in i1 i2 and i3 so if you look uh, so let's uh, uh, let us state what are Kirchhoff, what is kirchhoff's law and ohm's law okay so kirchhoff's law if i wish to uh, tell here it uh, uh, states that kirchhoff's law states that that total current total current or charge entering in entering a junction which we are also known as node junction or node so okay junction or not is exactly equal to the exactly equal to the charge or current leaving the not leaving the node or a junction as it has as it has no other place to go it has no other place to go except to leave except to leave as no charge is lost no charge is lost within the node so kirchhoff's law states the following 
if you look it in other words what in other words it it says is or i can say or it says that the algebraic sum of in particular it says that algebraic sum of all the currents entering and entering and leaving leaving a knot or junction must be a knot leaving a knot or junction must be must be equals to zero must be equal to must be equals to zero so if i look at back and see this electrical circuit so there are in particular two junctions one junction is junction b and another is junction d and there are two paths one path is if you see a b d a okay one path is a b d a and another path is c b d c okay so there are two things so there are two junctions there are two junctions or node b and d and two paths there are two paths one path is a b d a and another path is c b d c so if i use the kirchhoff's law so kirchhoff's law says that the sum of all the currents entering and leaving a knot or junction must be equal to zero so the algebraic sum of so there uh, the one junction is b okay so here the algebraic sum of all the currents entering and leaving a knot so here entering is i3 right so what you will see this here and in the junction what is there is i1 is entering so i1 is entering you have this arrow i1 is entering to b i2 is also entering to b and what is exiting uh, what is exiting is i3 so that that uh, kirchhoff's law tells that at the junction b what is happening is i3 is equals to i1 plus i2 okay so current entering and leaving a knot must be equals to zero so at the junction b if i wish to use kirchhoff's law okay if i use kirchhoff's law kirchhoff's law gives so kirchhoff's law gives you what at junction b if you look at carefully or d also we will look at i1 entering plus i2 they are entering and exhibiting uh, exiting is i3 so that is with negative sign is equals to zero okay this algebraic sum of all the currents entering and leaving a knot must be equals to zero if you look at the junction d what is the at uh, the junction d right so i3 is entering into junction d so if you look at here so i3 is 
entering into junction D and it is exiting in terms of 2. So, one is I1 and another is I2. So, I3 must be equals to I1 plus I2. So, you will get the same equation for the junction D. Okay, right. So, at the junction D what you will get is I3 is exiting, right. I3 is entering and exiting in sum of I1 and I2, I1 plus I2. So, these two together will give you one equation that is uh, I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals to 0. Okay. Now, let us use the now Ohm's law. What is Ohm's law? So, mathematically at a constant temperature, at a constant temperature current which you denote it by I is equals to voltage which we denote by V divided by resistance. which we denote by R. So, that comp that ratio is measured in amperes, that unit is amperes and A. Okay. So, here resistance is measured in terms of ohm okay, and voltage. So, voltage ratio with uh, ohm will give you amperes. So, current. So, at a constant temperature, the electrical current flowing through a fixed linear resistance is directly proportional to the voltage applied across it and also it is inversely proportional to resistance. So, you can see by this relation current is inversely proportional to the resistance and also proportional to the voltage. Okay. So, how would you use this into, into the given circuit? So, if you look at the circuit so, the, so, you are going through two paths A, B, D, A and C, B, D, C. So, uh, for paths, so if you use the Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's law for getting the equation for the path A, B, D, A and you have C, B, D, C. So, there are two paths. Let us go and look back. So, what it says is so, let us say A, B, D is A. So, you have I1 is going with resistance 2 ohm, right, 2 I1 plus 1 I3, right, 2 I1. So, if you see, so you are starting with here 2 I1. So, here this resistance is there 2 I1 plus 1 I 3 plus here again 2 resistance is there. So, here 2 I 1. So, what you will get for the path is 2 I 1 plus 1 I 3. So, so, if I write it clearly that is 2 I 1 plus 1 I 3 plus 2 I 1 equals total voltage is in this uh, path is 8 watt, 8 watt that is equals to 8, equals to 8. Similarly, if you go for C, B, D, C, so again I am telling you why because 2 I 1 here because 2 with its I 1 is current okay, and it is flowing through a linear resistance with 2 ohm right entering into the junction B okay, and then I 3 is ex ex exiting from junction B and it is entering into junction D with 1 ohm resistance and then it is exhibiting on the through uh, towards A with 2 ohm resistance. Okay, right? So, that is why 2 I 1 plus 1 I 3 plus 2 I 1. 
So that is 4 I 1 plus 1 I 3 equals to 8. So similarly here C B D A. So if you move, uh, follow this uh, path here C B D A. So C from here I 2. So 4 I 2 right I 2 is entering into junction B right with 4 resistance right. So 4 time I 2 will give you the total voltage here plus 1 I 3 here it is again entering into junction D. So plus 1 I 3 okay 1 I 3 then it is exhibiting from D okay towards C okay then I 2 but with 0 resistance there is no 0, zero, zero there is no resistance here so it is here 0 so plus 0 into I 2 is 0 and that is total what is it uh, is giving is 16 watt okay. So what you will get is 4 I 2 plus I 3 equals to 16 okay 4 I 2 plus I 3 equals to 16. So that will give you the second equation. So what you will get is here is 4 I 2 plus I 3 equals to 16. So you have three equations now. So system of equations are, so if I wish to write system of equations, system of linear equations, so L dot E dot stands for linear equations. One is I 1 plus I 2 minus I 3 equals to 0. Another equation is 4 I 1 plus I 3 equals to 8. The last equation is 4 I 2 plus I 3 equals to 16. If I wish to write in matrix notation, what it will be, what will be the coefficient matrix if I have 1 1 minus 1. I1, I2, I3 is equals to constant vector is 0, 8, 16. So that was a 4 I1 plus I3, so 0 I2, 4 I2 plus 1 I3 that is 16, right? Yeah. So you have the following system of linear equations here to solve a i is equals to b or a x equals to b. So, a is a 3 cross 3 matrix now which we want to solve. So, so here you can verify that determinant of a is non-zero. So, matrix is non-singular that you can verify, okay, right. So, uh, if determinant of A is non-zero means matrix is invertible. So, solution will be solution will be given by x equals to A inverse B. Okay, right. So, there are other ways also we can uh, transform it into uh, by using elementary row transformation. Okay, we are we can transform it into upper triangular matrix and use back substitution method to solve this equation. So, if I wish to make uh, uh, that um, you can say that is a standard process known as Gauss elimination method. Okay. So, if I wish to do use that what I have is now is let us do it. So, you if I wish to use Gauss elimination method. So, I wish to use I wish to solve this problem by using Gauss elimination method. Okay. 
you can find it it's inverse and you can directly find out the solution as well so what is there is so here i wish to make all the entries below this one leading no zero so already third row has the entry zero okay starting leading entry zero only you need to work with second row so r2 if i use the operation so i say you can say step 1 r2 is changed into r2 minus 4 time r1 okay so once you do that what will be the transform uh, equations now 1 1 minus 1 obviously zeros are created right zeros are created we are purposefully creating zeros so here zeros are created but not computed right right okay so the next entry is 0 minus 4 right so 0 minus 4 and uh, 1 minus minus plus 1 plus 4 is 5 so this can be verified easily here 4 1 you have this here here is no change in constant uh, in, in unknown vector i1 i2 i3 so that is equals to 0 okay here also no change right 8 minus 0 time 4 is 8 only so they remain same now what will be the step to here is Step 2 is I have already uh, if you look at the first row and if you look at the below entries okay okay leading entry is non zero and be below entries are all are zeros now. Now you will go down to from the second now this block you have to work with here. Now what you have to do you have to see here first row is minus 4 5 and the second row is here what i wish to now i wish to make this entry zero now by your by performing only element are uh, only row operations there are not com, uh, not uh, column operations are not allowed here in gauss basic gauss elimination method so what i will do here what is the step is r3 change into so R3 is so new row. So R is so I let's say call R3 some tilde. So now new matrix so R3 tilde it change into R3 tilde plus R2. So here you are going to use only the R2 second row. Okay, not the first row because if you use the first row, this entry becomes non-zero. The first leading entry becomes non-zero. Okay. So once you use this, what you will get is here 1 1 minus 1 0 minus 4 5 0 4 plus 4 is 0 1 plus 5 is 6 i1 i2 i3 0 8 now 16 plus 8 is 24 the performing the operations now now what you are reduced now now original original system it is reduced into the following three equations one equation is i1 plus i2 minus i3 equals to 0 what is the second equation if you look at below here minus 4 i2 plus 5 i3 minus 4 i2 plus 5 i3 is equals to 8 and the last equation is 6 i3 equals to 24 now how can you solve this equation uh, this system now you are starting from the last equation then use the second equation and then use the first equation means you are going like backward direction so backward substitution which we call so from the last equation so okay from the last 
equation we have I3 is equals to 4. Okay. So, you can make this as number some 1, 2, 3. So, now 2 gives what? Okay. So, equation 2 implies so, you have the I3 value. So, you substitute there. So, minus 4 I2 plus 20 is equals to 8 is equals to 8 implies so minus 4 i2 is equals to 8 minus 20 that is minus 12 this implies i2 equals to 3 right so now you have i2 and i3 value so you can use first equation so from there you will get i1 that is equals to I3 minus I2. So, that is equals to 4 minus 3 that is equals to 1. So, you have all the values obtained for the current. So, this is one application for system of linear equations in electrical engineering. So, there are various examples in uh, mechanical engineering, civil engineering and so on. Okay. So, there are large number of applications so that you can uh, uh, see in the reference book and uh, many more you can explore through the Google search as well. Okay. So, right. So, uh, what we have done uh, so far. So, that is a that is a application of system of linear equations. Okay. So, also we have last time uh, seen that why inversion method is uh, uh, discarded uh, from our uh, topic because it is computationally very expensive. You can solve the equations in, in uh, you can solve the equations by using this method only for restricted number of uh, the only for the uh, where uh, where the coefficient matrix A is of order not more than 10 you can see okay if it is less than 10 you can prefer some time this method okay but it is still computationally expensive okay similarly we have also discarded the kramer's rule since it also involves the evaluation of determinant okay and we have also shown that evaluation of determinant uh, uses uh, number of multiplications at least n factorial in number n factorial. So, that you can verify how it is large when n is equals to 10. Okay. Last time we also seen some sp uh, the special cases of the matrix A. So, if the matrix A has diagonal structure and is non-singular then you can solve that equation easily and the total number of operations are n. So, if I wish to add an example for this, it is very easy. So, you have uh, one example if I wish to write here is uh, let us have the system here 1 0 0 0 2 0 0 0 3 and let us have this is x 1 x 2 x 3 is equals to you have uh, let us say 2 4 5. So, it is very easy. So, you can individually. So, from from the first equation you can get x 1 equals to 2. From the second equation you will get x 2 equals to 4 and from the uh, x 2 equal 2 x 2 equals to 4. This implies x 2 equals to 2. Third equation will give you 3 x 3 is equals to 5. This implies x 3 equals to 5 by 3. x 3 equals to 5 by 3. So, it is a very simple case. Okay. So, there is both way you can go. You can start with the down, you can start with the up as well. So, whether go with forward substitution or backward substitution, both are the same. Okay. Right. So, this is one example for diagonal structure. So, another special case what we have discussed is if the matrix A is lower triangular matrix that is 
uh, that is you have the uh, entries above the diagonal above the diagonal are zero okay all the entries above the diagonal are zero then you will say that's a lower triangular matrix and that uses forward substitution to solve the system of linear equations and we have also seen that the total number of operations are of n square by 2 okay so let's see one example for this now so let us see one example so i have this equation 1 0 0 uh, let's say 2 3 0 4 5 6 you have a non vector is x1 x2 x3 and let's say this is uh, some 2 3 and 4 so you can see that the matrix the coefficient matrix a is non singular you can verify that okay it's very easy to verify determinant of a is non zero so, if you recall that the determinant of a lower triangular matrix or a diagonal matrix or an upper triangular matrix are nothing but the product of the diagonal entries. Okay. So, you can see the diagonal entries are 1 into 3, 1, 3 and 6. So, the determinant is nothing but 1 into 3 into 6 that is 18 that is non-zero. So, one of the, if one of the diagonal entry is 0, that is a singular matrix. If all the diagonal entries are non-zero, that is a non-singular matrix or invertible matrix. Okay. So, this is for only for special cases. Means either it is of diagonal structure or A is of lower triangular structure or A is of upper triangular structure. Okay, this only mean uh, the determinant equals to product of all diagonal entries. This is only the case for, especially for diagonal matrix, lower triangular matrix, and upper triangular matrix. Okay, now to solve this system, so you can use you can start from the first equation and you can go till last. So forward substitution, that's what we call as forward. So from the first equation, what you will get is x one equals to two. The second equation is 2x1 plus 3x2 equals to 3. So, this implies, so you use that x2, x1 value is 2. So, 2 into 2 is 4. So, 3x2 is equals to 3 minus 4. That is equals to minus 1. So, this implies x2 equals to minus 1 by 3. Now, similarly for the last equation, from the last equation you have 4x1 plus 5x2 plus 6x3 is equals to 4. Now, you use values from the above for x1 and x2. Okay. So, x1 is 2, so that is 8 plus 5 into minus 1 by 3, so minus 5 by 3 plus 6 time x3 is equals to 4. So, this implies okay, 6 time x3 is equals to 4 minus 19 by 3 right 4 minus so 18 to 3 is 24 24 minus 5 is 19 by 3. So, 4 minus 19 by 3 is minus 7 by 3 right so x3 is equals to x3 so solution what it what will be the solution here now so if i wish to write solution explicitly x1 is equals to 2 x2 equals to minus 1 by 3 x3 is equals to minus 7 by 18. 
So what we have used, what where we have started from, from the first equation and we are going to solve in second and then third. So this is called forward substitution method. Okay. Similarly for upper triangular matrix structure. So if the matrix A is of upper triangular means you have below the below the uh, diagonal entries, you know the diagonal, all the other entries are zero. Okay, then we can say this is a upper triangular structure. And as we as I mentioned that for this matrix to be non-singular, all the diagonal entries should be non-zero. Okay, and again we have seen that the operation count, number of operation count multiplication and division will be, of, will be of order of n square by 2 and here you can start from the down now. So, let us see one example for this case. Okay. So, let us see one example here. Let us see one example. So, let us have this is here. So, instead of this like a 1, 2, 3. 0, 4, 5, 0, 0, 6, x1, x2, x3 is equals to, let us say this is 18, this is uh, 18, let us say some, uh, some uh, 7 and let us say this is 3. So, now this is a upper triangular matrix, the coefficient matrix is upper triangular whose diagonal entries are non-zero. So, this is non-singular and to solve what will be, so you will start from the last now. So, you will start from the last and going for from last to first. So, from the last equation 6 x 3 is equals to 18, this implies x 3 equals to 3. From the second equation, what you have is 4x2 plus 5x3 is equals to 7. This implies 4x2 is equals to, you can put substitute the value of x3 from the previous. So, 7 minus 15 that is uh, minus 8. So, this implies x2 is equals to minus 2. Now, Now, from the first equation, you have x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 is equals to 3. So, use the x2 and x3 value from the previous. So, what you will get is x1 is equals to 3 minus 2 times x2, 2 times x2, x2 is minus 2, minus minus plus, so plus 4 minus 3x3, so minus 3 into 3 is 9. So, that is minus 2. So, you have the solution x1 equals to minus 2. So, what is the solution here? x1 is equals to minus 2, x2 also equals to minus 2, x2 is also minus 2 and x3 is equals to 3. Okay? So, this is one example of upper triangular structure having the coefficient matrix as an upper triangular matrix. Okay. So, here you can uh, see that operation count is of n square by 2. So, how did we have counted is, so you have the one operation here. So, when you use the backward substitution one operation here x equals to this one operation. For this second equation what you have is 4 x 2. So, what you have is x 2 equals to 7 minus. So, if I wish to write is x 2 is equals to 1 by 4 times 7 minus 5 x 3. So, one multiplication, one division. So, that is 2. Okay. Number of operations are 2. So, for the three equa third equation, what you will have is x1 is equals to 3 minus 3x3 3 minus 2x2. 2 2. Okay. So, you have here 1 by 1. Okay. 
so here two multiplications okay at most one division if it is if it is in, instead of one you will have okay you will have more non some non non not equal to one value so here is two operate two operations currently right because one division by one is one only so there is no operation here so two plus two plus one is five and what is n square here is n is three so three square is nine nine by two is four point five right so it is at almost operation number of count is almost equals to five here right four point five if you round off so operation count if you do is one plus two plus two one plus two plus two okay one plus two plus two that is equals to five okay that is equals to five right and you know three square by two is approximately equals to five only round off okay right so this is how you can see the number of operation happening into upper triangular matrix uh, upper triangular structure or lower triangular structure and also diagonal structure you can also discuss fine right okay so let's move further now so special cases again so what here is you have another space special case is let's it does not fall in the previous cases means neither a is diagonal matrix nor it is lower triangular nor it is upper triangular matrix let's assume that you can at, at least you can decompose as a product of two matrices one is lower triangular one part is lower triangular and another part is upper triangular okay so means here if you can if it is possible to write the matrix a as follows okay so means where you can means you can write a is equals to l time u so this part is lower l stands for lower triangular matrix and u stands for upper triangular matrix if it is possible so you will see the examples for them then you can solve the system ax equals to b what is happening in this case a is suppose a is a can be written as l into u so you have this case here l into ux equals to b so here you have now two things so ux is a vector let's say y ux is a y okay x is unknown u is known so y is also unknown okay and you have l y is equals to b so you have to solve this first l y equals to b to get y substitute y here and then you solve this u x equals to y so for solving this you need forward substitution method and for solving this you have backward substitution method so if it happens that you can write a as l into u that actually have less number of operations than determining or evaluating a determinant in a computer okay so both will leads to of number of operation count is big of n square by 2 right okay fine so uh, let's see um, uh, the what type of lu decompositions are available okay so what do you mean by lu decomposition you have, have is this is matrix a this is matrix l this is l and this is u so here if you count the number of unknowns if you count the number of unknowns here in l that is n into n plus 1 by 2 and in a u again you will see that is n into n plus 1 by 2 so total number of unknowns are n into n plus 1 so that is n square plus n now but if you compare the coefficients on both sides what you will get is 
you have how many AIJs are there? N square. So you will have N square equations in N square plus N unknowns. Okay. So to have unique solution or unique decomposition, you need to define or specify N unknowns. Any one of means like it's not it's only uh, only the diagonal entries. Okay, you can uh, pick up any column or any row or any member of this. Okay, any member of lower sum of the part of L and sum of the part of U, you can specify n number of unknown sum give values or means that is equals to 1 or that is equals to 2 or 3. Okay, any one. Okay, so once you specify n unknowns, then you have n square equations in n square unknowns. And since A is invertible, then you can solve this equation uniquely. Okay. But again, here it is underlined that if you are able to write A as L u, L time u. So, you may have in your mind that every invertible matrix can be written as this, but the answer is no. Every invertible matrix cannot be written as decomposition of uh, L into U. We will uh, we will look at the examples in a few minutes. Okay, so here, so what type of decompositions available? If you are able to write, means there should be some check. You need to check before starting. Uh, before starting finding LU decomposition for a given matrix. If you wish to find LU decomposition for a given matrix, you need to put a check about the matrix, whether it satisfies some conditions which guarantees that it has LU, L into U. Okay. So, means you require some sufficient conditions. Okay. So, we will see okay, in few minutes. So, Okay, so what are we have is so here is uh, three decomposition we will learn. One is Dulittle's decomposition, where it will say uh, where you have he has pick up uh, the diagonal entries are in a lower triangular part and all it is measure equals to one. Okay, so you have n unknown entries in the diagonal entries of L. So he has fixed Li is equals to one. So, and rest you have n square unknowns and if you are able to write a is equals to LU, then you can certainly able to find other unknown n. Okay. Similarly, instead of LII, if you fix UII is equals to 1, that is known as Kraut's decomposition. Okay. That is known as Kraut's decomposition. Instead of if LII is equals to 1, if you fix UII is equals to 1 means the diagonal entries in upper triangular part are equals to 1. Then it is known as Kraut's decomposition. Okay. So, there is a special case regarding the symmetric matrix. Okay. So, if matrix is symmetric means A is equals to A transpose. Okay. A is equals to A transpose then you have instead of L into U you will have L into L transpose, right. So, for this it is necessary. So, this is also need to, I means when you are trying to find any type of LU decomposition, again I am mentioning you need to put a check. What the check will be? Let me uh, tell you, okay, right. So, what the result says? If all n leading principal minors of n cross n matrix A are non singular, then A has an LU decomposition. What does it mean? Okay. If all n leading principal minors of the n cross n matrix. So, let, so, uh, let me uh, tell you what do you mean by leading principal minors. Okay. So, I have let us say examples, let us see example, one example let us say. I have the matrix A 
1, 2, 3, 4. So, I wish to find all the leading. So, here n cross n matrix have n minus n leading minus. Here 2 cross 2 matrix have 2 leading minus. So, how will you find this? This is 1, this is 2. So, a 1 is the first leading minor that is nothing but determinant of 1 that is 1. A 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4 determinant. Okay. Means it is making starting making a block means you have the you are starting with A 1, 1. Okay, and it goes at most, so for the second minor, it will go to second row and second column. For the third minor, so if I have 3 cross 3 matrix, I will have, okay, let me have this is 1, 2, 3, okay, 2, 4, 5, 1, 3, 4. Okay. So, if I wish to state all the leading 3 minors here, so one minor is this, another minor is at most go to the second row at most and on the second and to the second column. So, you have A1 is 1 means 1 cross 1, A2 is 2 cross 2, so that is 1, 2, 2, 4. A3 is the determinant of A only 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 5, 1, 3, 4. So, so if you look at here determinant of A1 is so A1 is 1. A2 is determinant of this so that is 4 minus 6 that is minus 2. So, this is non-zero, this is non-zero. Here is also non-zero, here is zero and here this may be, this is sub 1 into 16 minus 15 minus 2 into 6 minus 4 plus 3 into 6 minus 4. So, that is equals to 1 minus 4 plus 6. So, that is equals to 6 plus 1 7 minus 4 is 3. So, again this is non-zero. So, A3 is also non-zero. Okay, but one of the minor A2 is 0. Okay, and also so note that A is non singular. Non singular, but A2 is 0, means leading second minor is 0. Okay. So, here that result will not be applicable that whether it has an added decomposition or not. Okay. Right. So, you need to put this check. So, you have this is a 3 cross 3 matrix similarly for 4 cross 4. So, you will go for th 3 third block and then you have entire matrix A. Okay. Right. So, if I wish to give you a 4 cross 4 part as well here. So, third example, let me have a, uh, let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Okay. If I wish to find, so leading minor 1, one first minor is this, second minor is, so this uh, block, okay. 
ओके थर्ड माइनर इज एस वन एंड फोर्थ माइनर इज एंड फोर्थ माइनर इज द डिटर्मिनेंट ऑफ द मैट्रिक ओके राइट सो ऑल माइनर इफ ऑल आर नॉन जीरो then this result gives you guarantee that it has lu decomposition means you can start for finding lu decomposition for the given matrix okay right another result is about solesky decomposition so which says that if a is real what is the meaning of a is real matrix the a is real means all the entries of the matrix a are real numbers not complex okay they are all are real numbers the second thing is if a is symmetric symmetric means a is equals to a transpose and positive definite then it has a unique factorization a is equals to l into l transpose in which l is lower triangular with a positive diagonal okay so what it says is okay so if i have one example here i need to have a all the entries must be real so 1 2 3 let's say 2 3 4 5 Four, five, six. So I have made I have made sure that a is equals to a transpose, and a is all the entries are real, so real and symmetric. What other condition need to be make sure is it is positive definite. So when I will say this positive definite matrix, so if positive definite when you have x transpose a x is greater than 0 for all x non zero if it happens so that also you can put a check on okay before finding the cholesky decomposition when you write the pseudo code okay